Welcome back to Rotomoto. It's race day again, already the third and final round in eight days. And the peach state means another low edit video with no face, but that means better audio as I get to use my pod microphone instead. My name is Donnie. And in this video, I will give you five riders to look at when making your Pulp MX fantasy picks for the third round in Atlanta, tips for picking the FFL, weather report, race day schedule, and even a very early look at what my team could be come Saturday. But first, as always, we look at the stats and info from the previous round just three days ago. 10,151 total players, of which 5,972 were of the paid championship league, meaning 1,000 paid players have stopped playing since Daytona, which is really a shame, but understandably as the realization of your actual chance of winning and the discouragement of failing builds over time. And also another Tuesday round doesn't help. The perfect team for the night was an even 300, slightly below average, as this is the first week in many that we have had absolutely no 52 point scores. Add 30 points with two FFLs and the highest possible was 330. And this was 100% doable. And in fact, many did as Justin Cooper and Ken Roxon had two of the highest FFL pick trends in their respective classes. And now both have three FFLs on the season, leading their divisions. The median championship score was just just over 200 for the first time since Daytona, meaning if you scored 203 or more, you did better than half of the paying field. Extra all-star selection falls to a season low of 2.52, but that still means most people have three or more all-stars on their team. 23 riders out of 28 were able to score double points, paired with half of the all-stars maxing for a total of 31 riders scoring 26 or more, including every single 450 rider in the main, except Mitchell Oldenburg because I picked him. Despite Styles Robertson missing the night show entirely, 14.7% of players had him on their roster. Friendly reminder to follow at RotoXMoto on Twitter and Instagram and check the Twitter fleets and Instagram stories there for up to the minute injury news. I actually had this one posted with about 40 minutes to go, so you would have had plenty of time to get him off your team. Despite this, we actually had a relatively low number of zero point picks, 87.9% total pick trend means meaning about 9 in 10 teams had a goose egg, the lowest since Daytona. In the Rotomoto League for the second Atlanta round, D Lindley 963 took the week with 277 and DM 912 is back on the top of the season championship with 3,271, but only 20 points separates him from fourth place. I had yet another rough round and me finally throwing in the towel. My bid to hit the top 100 for Supercross this year after narrowly missing it last year. I cannot believe I'm still in the top 1000 after accruing my 10th zero on the year. After having only two zeros in 2020, this one hurts the most because I wanted to swap Wageman for Master Pool. In fact, I did it with 10 minutes to go. But Team Solitaire is just so rad and I couldn't live with myself if I didn't have that Slayer bike on my team when it made the main except it didn't. It also didn't help that I picked the only 450 rider to make the main and miss double points and Carson Mumford doing what Carson Mumford does. The new Jerry is here. The ins and outs list added a few more. The 250 squad looks mostly the same aside from the addition of Ryan Sipes to the list after his gnarly LCQ crash. Hardy Munoz will join the rest of this list waiting for outdoors before returning and keep your eye on Styles Robertson if he lines up or not as he nor the team has posted anything about why he missed or when we should expect him back. The 450 team sees Bloss, Bogle, and Freeze, and Oldenburg as guys that are likely out until outdoors, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Bloss or maybe Bogle pop in for a round before ends. Malcolm Stewart hit a false neutral in the first turn, taking him out for the night, but he is hopeful to return for ATL3. Chiz and Norn both had issues in practice and hoped to race, but alas, was not fit for competition. Let's see if they return for Saturday, but either way, I would not have them on your team. No all-star swap as it's the same eight as last round. Don't forget that this is the last true 250 West round of the season. Next Saturday's round in Salt Lake, we'll see the East Riders return before the East and West showdown at the finale. With the week off, every single rider on the 250 West will be pickable for you the next time we see them back out on the track. So let your heart run wild Saturday. All right, on to your Atlanta three picks. I have three guys to target, one to avoid, and a high handicap for you gamblers out there, starting with the little class and working our way up. 250 all-star for the second video in a row is Garrett Marchbanks. I hate doing this. I hate doubling up picks, but he was only the sixth most picked all-star, being only slightly more popular than Peters and Swole with 94% of players still eligible. So he's back on this list. He has finished top seven and six of seven rounds, all but one, even the ones where he had a bad start. The only round he missed was ATL one when he crashed out after running second for the majority of the race. With Cooper down to a one and McAdoo ailing, I think this is finally the week that we aren't able to just swap between the two. And I'm looking at the Club MX hotshot here. 
The 250 rider worth double points I want you to look at is Jace Owen for the second time in ATL. I was just a little early on him on Saturday as he didn't handle the slick conditions that well, but this weekend should be dry and he should have no trouble making the main straight through the heat. He has finished top 12 in three of his mains and top 15 in four of them, missing only one main altogether. His strength really lies in track position and the only non-all-star with a better average start than him is one handicap Cody Shaw. The rider I want you to be wary of picking this week is Malcolm Stewart, your 450 All-Star. He may come into this race a little banged up after his first lap crash. And at first, I thought his 9 handicap was a steal as he's a top 10 machine this year, right? Well, not so fast. In the last five races, meaning everything since Daytona, he has only cracked the top 10 in one of them, a sixth at Arlington 3, and has instead finished outside the top 12 in three of those last five. Now, if you were looking to go safe and minimize risk, a nine means that making the main at all bottoms him out at a 10, but surely there are better all-star picks out there. Another rider that you should be apprehensive about picking is minus three handicap Chase Sexton, and for good reason. However, this class is getting stretched thin in the middle and it's being overloaded top and overloaded bottom. There aren't a lot of good high upside picks in that zero to seven handicap range and the guys over eight are scary. So now we are at the guy with two podiums and two races and four top fives in his last five starts. All but another sand section DNF. I understand if you were the type to stay away from negatives, but this is one that is going to have to end up on my team. The high handicap hero of the round given to a rider with a handicap of 10 or more that I think has a realistic chance to score massive points this weekend if you're the type of person that likes to sweat out a little LCQ for a big payout. The Triple H for this round is Brandon Hartraft. He missed the last two rounds with a mysterious illness that neither he nor the team have elaborated on. And even if he lines up, you might be wondering why I'm putting here because he's had some major struggles this season. And while that is true, the level of competition has taken a nosedive. Guys that were mid LCQ at the start of the season are now making mains Every week, Clayson, Starling, Morantz, even Scott Champion made his first main event of the year. There are 38 different riders that have made the main event in the 450 class this year, and he has to be the best 15 handicap we've ever had. And if you need to make up those spots, here's your path to 52 points. The 250 FFL sees a return to norm with Justin Cooper ripping ATL2. He is the clear-cut favorite with three of seven, nearly half, and the only guy with more than one. At this point, it's Jay Coop or Bust. The 450 side, however, is getting interesting. Cooper Webb is either just a bit off, or he's in full championship protect mode because he has just been a little not himself, but his starts have still been solid, just not first place solid. Roxon comes back with a vengeance, leading wire to wire on his way to his third FFL, tying Webb at the top. I think it's really down to these two, but I don't trust either of them enough to be a good recommendation. The weather should be much more predictable come Saturday with clouds and a low chance of rain. Should stay dry or at least dry enough for the track crew to manage and keep practice schedule intact. Speaking of, the race day schedule is your standard East Coast fair with race day live at 1 p.m. on the East Coast and local with the West Coast needing to tune in at 10 a.m. to catch race day live with Blair and Hubbard. The enhanced cheat sheets will hit Patreon about 30 minutes after qualifying at nearly 5 p.m. while the rest of you should watch Twitter and Instagram for the basic cheat sheet to drop around 5.30 or 6. The night show kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on the Peacock app, but NBCSN will feature a live broadcast as well. Unfortunately, we will not have an after show this week as the following morning I have the biggest event of the year for my personal business and your boy needs to get paid so I'm straight off the bed after the main so I can get up early and get that coin. Before I show you my early team for Atlanta 3, it's a good time to mention that this is an entirely privateer operation. I research, write, shoot, edit, and post every single video myself without any help from sponsorships. In addition to making the cheat sheet and other content I post on here, Twitter, if you want to support me and help the channel grow, please consider checking out some of the merch from Rotomoto.co, including our super rad Never Change AMA shirt that was recently featured on the Pulp MX show. If you are serious about upping your fantasy game, consider subscribing to Patreon for access to an additional podcast for every single race where I go over every single rider's handicap in full. Our private Discord server, and most importantly, the enhanced cheat sheets that are packed full of so much race day data, it'll make your head spin. And if you want to support but don't have the scratch to spare, the easiest way to help is by subscribing to the channel, commenting something constructive on the video, and sharing the social media posts with your friends. In fact, why don't you go leave me a comment right now and tell me your favorite animal so I know who's actually listening this far into the video. My Monday morning team will consist of 250 All-Star Garrett Marchbanks with a 6 handicap, Jace Owen for the reasons discussed before, I'm going to take Tire Master Pole at a 6 who I wanted to take last week, and finishing it off is Ramiller Alves with his 9 handicap.
On the 450 side, I'm looking at Aaron Plessinger with that lofty seven handicap as a safety net on a similar track to what he almost won on last weekend. Chase Sexton, despite being a minus three handicap, Marvin Muskin, who has finished 11th or better in nine of his 12 mains, and Cade Clayson, who now has seven main events to his credit, including five of the last six. No FFL for me. I'm just going to walk away with my negative 35 points on the year. Don't forget to follow at RotoXMoto on Twitter and Instagram for the qualifying insight, injury updates, stats, and banter as the race day goes on. And of course, those ever important fantasy cheat sheets. And if you want even more help making your picks, be sure to check out and subscribe to RotoMoto on Patreon for access to the enhanced cheat sheets, chock full of more data than you can imagine to help you make those huge point picks. I want to give a shout out to the current Patreon supporters. This channel is made possible by good people like John D, Keith H, and Dane E. Thanks as always for watching Rotomoto. My name is Donnie, and I will see you on race day.